try to find a way to come together and really make this a showcase um, and make it you know a really exciting part of downtown rather than a, a sleepy backwater that's empty half of the time which is what it became um, um, uh, when, when um, the, the current buildings were put in place um, and so what we'd like is you know as people come in you know uh, down full this intersection becomes a really great place and so we've actually got plans two small plazas on each corner so some nice public space and then signature buildings on the corner with corner features that really announce hey look you're you're coming right into the heart of the heart right now and so um, so we're really hopeful that we can make that happen we don't control all the land so it's not entirely up to us but we've come together with with our partners in the area and we're really trying to make that happen so if we can pull that off um, that'll be one of those catalytic things and so one of the focuses you know we want this to to include a lot of housing and we want the ground floor to include <clears throat> not only retail in general but we like to see an entertainment focus too and that could be really complimentary to the Warners and all the great programming that they do and and entertainment is one of those things that really has helped turn down uh, turn around a lot of downtowns um, retail you know sometimes can be that that factor but a lot of cities Fresno included are tend to be over retailed and so um, uh, the, the retail component tends to be the last piece that comes after you have a big enough workforce and residential population and then the entertainment will, I mean the retail will come. Whereas entertainment will often come at the beginning stages and pull people. And, um, and um, so, so uh, we would love for this to have an entertainment component too because of that. Um, and then, oh, and one, one other thing I'll add, and I'll take your question after that. Um, the Warners was, was um, um, a, a model for us in a, a, a way in the plant, too. Uh, what I love about the Warners Theater, and Tower Theater does the same thing, Wilson Theater does the same thing. The, uh, the, the theater itself, the auditorium for this building, is a big windowless box. And yet, we're standing right here on this really fantastic streetscape, really beautiful environment that's nice to be. We have, and why is that? Because they knew, and they weren't doing it for, for the good of the community back then, they were doing it because they understood market forces in a pedestrian downtown better back then. They knew that street funnage was gold in a downtown, and you had all those pedestrians, you wanted to rent that, that, that sidewalk frontage out to merchants who would, who would appeal to those pedestrians walking by. So, you know, for 30 feet or whatever, the, the, um, the theater windowless box is wrapped with the, the tea place and Frank's place and the old bike shop and all that stuff. And so uh, one of the things in the new code <clears throat> that we put in there is that if you're gonna do a Cineplex or a big department store or something, we want this same strategy um, employed. So that, okay, yeah, maybe, you know, um, you know Macy's or whatever it is, or they're, they're downsizing, so probably won't be Macy's, but anyway, whatever it is, has a big entrance like this at the corner and it's got their sign, but then, Every 25 feet, there's a coffee shop or a, you know a, a shoe store or whatever you know uh, marching down the sidewalk, so that you don't have you know a department store entrance and then a blank wall for a block that kind of repels everybody. And that way, you get the best of both worlds. You get you get a big you know a tractor without the dead spots that they can kind of you know tend to create. They got it right in the old days, and this is another way that we're trying to get back to the future. So are you working with CBS to have them maybe remodel their... They, they are interested in rebuilding. And so um, they have different ideas about how it ought to be than we do. Um, and so we're working with them to try to find that win-win solution. Um, they're, they're still, they haven't got the downtown fever just yet. And so we're trying to make sure that they do. And, um, you know, with, with the, the downtown code in place, they're, they're going to have to do it right anyway. But um, we want to really, you know, help them do it in a way that would be successful and would be part of a bigger project that would, you know, really benefit downtown too. CVS partners with Target. Is there any chance that we could get a downtown Target? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that would be know, nice. Having you know, when when you, uh, you know, one of our big goals is to have a huge uh, residential population downtown. We'd like to see 10,000 apartments over the next 10 or 20 years get built down here, which would, you know, give us 15, 20,000 residents in this area, which would be great. And they're going to need, you know, housewares and, you know, things like that. And so um, whether it's Target or an independent operator or some other operator, having stores like that as part of the mix over time is going to help this 
become more viable, not only as an entertainment district and a work district, but a neighborhood too. And so, yeah, we, I don't know if it would be with this one, but um, that's the kind of thing that, that you know, uh, we're interested, as long as it's done in the urban way, you know? A lot of times they want to come in and do their suburban model downtown and, and you've got a successful store that created a dead spot and we don't want that, but Target, all kinds of big department stores are now, they have urban models because a lot of cities aren't letting them do the suburban thing downtown, but they want to access those new markets that are emerging. Um, they're, they're, they're kind of tapped out in the suburbs, so they're trying to go back into the older areas where they don't, they're not as well established. And so they're coming up with multi-story, you know, structured parking, you know, mixed use models. And um, um, cities that hold their ground can, can get a good model out of some of these companies that have a history of not quite doing it right. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, by doing all this development, what are you going to do with the parking? Are you going to structure it or what yeah, are you going to so, put it? Yeah, um, so, you know, I would expect, well, first of all, we have, um, you know, you, you might not believe it from driving around during the middle of the week and looking at the street parking, but, if, but we've been inventorying our parking downtown and we actually have more parking than we use, even at, you know, lunchtime during the middle of the week. Um, the surface of the street parking gets filled up, but you go to the Spiral Garage, you go to the Convention Center Garage, you go to, to this garage behind CVS on Merced Street, all of them only half full. So we've got a little bit of room to grow. We need to manage it better though. We're not doing a good enough job of enticing employees off of the street to free those up for customers, getting them into garages. There are ways to do that. Um, um, that other folks have pioneered. I have some experience with that too, and so that's one of the next things that we're thinking about. But as we grow, the parking supply, you know, will need to grow too. So we're looking at it from two angles. One, um, the parking requirements downtown are going to be the lowest in the city. So when private developers put up buildings, they're not going to have to put up as much parking as you would, say, you know, at, at Willow and <clears throat> and Copper, because we have transit here, we have walkability, we have mixed uses. When I go to a restaurant for lunch downtown, they don't need a parking space for me because I'm already parked at the office and I walk to lunch, right? And so you, you don't, you, when you have that mixed use walkable environment, you still need some parking, but you don't need quite as much as you would need up north. So we've reduced those, but new buildings will still have to have some parking. Um, and then uh, um, 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 the public side of things is what we're also looking at. So we're trying to leverage high-speed rail, for example, as a big opportunity to partner they want parking you know in conjunction with the station and so what we're working out with them is that hey rather than having a bunch of surface parking right by the station that creates an, a dead spot let's work together on shared structures that are maybe a block or two away people come in maybe they're using it to go to, to work or shop or to to take the train down to la or up to san francisco and when you, when you park them a block or two away, guess what? They're walking by the coffee shop. Hey, maybe I'll grab a cup of coffee before I get on the train, right? And it helps add foot traffic to downtown. And so we're trying to kind of get two birds with one stone. We get parking that we need. We only paid for half of it because we did a shared structure with the state. And it puts people on the sidewalks and hopefully into businesses too because of where we put it. So. And it gets wrapped with retail just like exactly. that. So it's not <clears throat> an ugly parking Exactly. Space. The, the, uh, my guess is is that for the first couple of years here, the first <clears throat> several buildings we'll see will probably be, you know, three, four, five stories with parking surface parking behind in the middle of the block um, that you can't see, but it's there. And then over time, as the the economy keeps getting more and more robust down here, rents get stronger and and the demand gets higher, then we'll probably start seeing more private parking garages. Um, in conjunction with with development projects, but the economics have to be right for that to work. Uh, you know, a, a surface stall, depending on your land costs and, and all that, can be you know a couple grand per stall, um, um, and a, a structured st uh, parking stall can be you know twenty thousand or more per stall. So. Developers don't tend to want to go there unless that helps them, you know, make a, a denser project and the rents are there to, to cover all that. So we'll we'll get there. Most downtowns do get there, but it, it'll it'll be phase two, not not phase one, you know, next year or two. All right, let's walk to the uh, to the front of the housing authority building over here. It's raised up a little bit so we can sort of see around from that stage. 